Okay, hello. Hi, I'm Orser, here with my very first guest for this lovely killer interview series. Uh, who are you? Would you like to take some time to introduce yourself, your credentials, what you're known for, etc.? Um, yeah, sure. My name is Pally. I go by Pally Live over on Twitch, and I play Trapper. I play pretty much every killer, but Trapper is the one that I guess I'm known for, that people you know recognize me for. Um, I've been playing Trapper since day one of the beta of this game when he was the only killer, so... <laughs> That's what I'm known for. And just like out of curiosity, do you have Legacy Trapper? I had Legacy Trapper. Um, I then, was, yeah, I had the save game bug. Oh, like that's a, rough. Like a handful of people. Uh, that would have saved me a lot of money in cosmetics. I would never would have bought another one. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring up a sword point or anything. My bad. No, it's fine. It hurts my soul, but I'll get over it. All right. So, I mean, I guess that was the first question, but following up on that, what got you into Dead by Daylight? When did you start? Like, what was your like initial thoughts when you were first beginning to play the game? What got me into Dead by Daylight? It's it's weird because I saw it pop up on Steam. Mm -hmm. And for me back then, um, it was only like twelve dollars. Like they weren't charging like I think I think it was on a deal or something. I don't know, but I remember only paying like twelve dollars for it. I'd have to check my Steam um Canadian dollars, by the way. I'd have to check my Steam history, but um I saw it and I thought first person and it's melee. You don't see that very often. I'd only ever seen that in like um chivalry i don't know if you ever played chivalry i played a little bit of chivalry yeah and i was really bad at that game so i thought if i can hit people and they can't hit me back this is gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> so i started playing dbd and it was it, it was a lot of fun I, the gameplay loop even to this day like even with all the burnout that i've gotten over the years the gameplay loop there's something special about it and that's what got me into it that's why i stuck with it yeah for sure i feel that though like i i could feel the little burnout effect myself but then I like I took a whole day off my schedule of playing Dead by Daylight, and then like it kind of went away over time, you know. Yeah. So jokes notwithstanding, about Civ Five, uh, it is good to take breaks when you need them. Oh my goodness! One oh. of the many blunders of the dev streams. Yeah. Okay. So this next one is a little bit of a like it's a multi-parter question type of deal. So they're all kind of similar, but I will get to them when they come up. Okay. So sure. what made you decide to fully main? trapper specifically it all started well obviously he was the first and only killer in the game during the beta um race came out when the game was like officially non-beta i actually um, didn't know that. that uh yeah. i first started playing in 2017 so there were always like the three. Oh, okay yeah so like fun fact though when uh when dbd was still in beta there was a a, a way to get race in the game he was being worked on Okay. But yeah, he wasn't like officially released until the game was officially released. But what made me stick with Trapper was Infinites. He was the only one at the time who could do anything about Infinites. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because there was no window blocking. There was like a two window shack. There was a lot, right? Yep. Yep. Two window shack, double pallets at every loop, God window in every main building. Yeah, it was it was insane. That's what made me really get into trapper because it, it made me feel like i wasn't completely powerless that's that's completely fair and uh as far as you know dead by daylight it's not just a killer game did you play survivor first did you do a little bit of 50 50 when you first started like what was the the spread like well for me um the first thing i played was killer uh for like i said you know you know hit them for sure hit them they can't hit back kind of thing but i i've i did play a lot of survivor back in the beginning survivor was I, it's always funny when I see people complain about Survivor now because Survivor then was <laughs> like if if you're a killer and you're versing Survivors now and you're you're complaining you should you should try versing Survivors back then when they <laughs> it was insane but um, Survivor back then was a lot easier to play in my opinion because um, you could get your exhaustion back mid chase for sprint burst mm -hmm. there wasn't bloodlust right yeah at, at the beginning and there wasn't bloodlust which is why trapper was so appealing because you could just cut off the infinites bloodlust was introduced as a well you know a typical thing yeah, yeah a typical band-aid fix for infinites now i'm not really sure why it exists in three stages but whatever um but yeah no i, I definitely and ever since then it's probably more 60 percent survivor especially uh there was a like a dark period where killer was just not very fun it was <laughs> for during, trapper. Uh, dead hard for distance Oh yeah, that it, and Trapper during it, it wasn't even for the distance with Trapper. You and they could just go through the trap, traps, yeah. And it was just like, why am I playing this killer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind of already covered my next question of like, would you say you play more killer now? You said it was like sixty forty in Survivor's favor, right? Um, well, it's weird because when I stream, it's mostly killer. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but when when I do stream Survivor, the streams are longer, and I do it one day a week. 
there's a lot of like, and this is going to sound really weird. It's, there's a lot of like mental exhaustion that comes with playing killer, especially a killer like Trapper that you have to, I feel like you have to fight really hard when you're playing Trapper. Yeah, there's a lot more like pressure on you rather than like, you know, when you're playing Survivor and you have teammates to kind of shoulder some of that burden with you. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you just have to fight a lot harder when you're playing Trapper. There's a lot of mental exhaustion with killer overall, you know, aside from a few killers that are like Chucky that are just, you know, a lot easier to play at a higher strength. Uh, that's not to knock Chucky mains or anything like that. It's just they're easier to play. But because of that, I find I can play Survivor for longer than I can for Killer, and that's kind of what contributes to that these days. But I do mostly, when I stream, play Killer. Yeah, that's fair. I do the same thing. I have, like, three days a week where I play Killer, and then, like, my community night on Fridays is, like, only Swift, and then, you know, that stream usually goes longer because... Yeah, it's easier to go longer that way. Yeah, exactly. When do you feel like you really understood trapper and like how long did it take before you like felt like okay i have a pretty solid grip on this guy it's weird because i don't think i truly i don't it's hard to say i understood his like he doesn't have a a, a ton of power but it, it's weird to say i didn't understand his power until they made traps set faster there was a time when traps used to take a year to set uh, they, i don't know if you remember that uh um, no i didn't really play a trapper all uh, i do also remember they used to be able to be sabotaged yeah, you, so that, that goes along with it, right? It used to take upwards to like six seconds to set a trap. Oof. And then they could be sabotaged and the trap was just gone. Like they could sabo all your traps and it would be, you'd be man with machete. Um, but when they started to address those issues, that's when I realized, okay, he's got a power level that can be worked with now. And on top of that, you start to realize it's not always just about getting traps. Uh, there are some maps where you're just not going to get traps. Traps feel nice, but when you understand what Trapper is capable of, it's not just about getting them to step in traps it's about you well it's also about using them to z like zone them away from loops and stuff like that you know if you cut off a loop most survivors are going to run away they're going to run to a weaker loop kind of thing that's where the i think the oh, i hate saying the word chess these days but that's where the, the chess gameplay of trapper comes into play <laughs> i'd have to say one of the most like terrifying things is when you're running away from a trapper and he just like stands there and watches you because you're yep. running into his web oh my goodness yeah, no, that's, <laughs> and it's funny because there's a lot of times I'll be chasing behind a survivor and I'll be giving them the nodders like, I know where you're going and it's not good for you. <laughs> yeah, it never, it never feels good, but it's like, I was playing 2v8 last Friday actually, and a trapper put a trap in the middle of a bush that wasn't even like along the side of a loop. It was just a random shrub and he just ran me into it and it made zero sense to me. Oh and yeah, oh, absolutely. I do that a lot with 2v8 uh, in the Yamaoka maps. There's so many random shrubs and bushes you can just stick a trap in. And nobody and survivors don't it. even think about it. Yeah. And, and and it's not just that. It's just like you could put a random trap. Like, I don't know if you ever go to, um, well, obviously you do. You play DVD. But uh, <laughs> in front of the exit gates at uh, uh, Disturbed Ward, um, or like uh, Crotus Prent, um, there's usually like a couple of shrubs right in front of the exit gate. And it's the same with like uh, Red Forest. You will get traps and th these are just shrubs that are just out there in the middle of like clear ground you'll get traps there more than you would actually believe it's actually kind of insane okay so you have like specific spots that you're like okay this is gonna put in some work this game oh yeah like uh, like i'll uh depending on where i spawn i'll place a trap down in a random spot and i'll, I'll tell my chat yeah this is gonna this is gonna pay off later this is gonna get me like a three or four k later no i do and the i do the exact same thing like the once in a blue moon where i play trapper like i will i will be like okay this trap is so bad it's good it wraps around yep yep sometimes those weird traps pay off and and, and i think that's another thing that keeps me coming back to trapper is that it's so satisfying <laughs> when they pay off it's so satisfying when your traps work yeah jokes about chess aside it does feel good when you place a trap like five minutes ago and then you, they step in it and you're like i knew that was gonna happen yeah yeah no it is it's you get that that giga chad smile on your face it's fantastic Alrighty. so next up we're gonna be talking about cosmetic options we talked about this a little bit earlier with the whole legacy thing but how do you feel about the killer's cosmetic options do they have like enough do they not have enough is there a specific dream skin you'd like to get made anything like that i think trapper's got a lot of cosmetics i think because of the nature of what his outfit is it always has to contain a mask so there's they're very limited on what they could do naughty bear was one of the coolest things i've ever done 
I agree, Krampus. Krampus is one of the cooler things they've done with Trapper. Oh, literally, because uh, he's because he's cold. Yeah. Yep, it's great. And um, I think my dream skin, and a lot of people are gonna hate me for this because they want it to be a full chapter. Okay. My dream skin would be just a Jason legendary. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're ever gonna make that like just a skin. Like, there's no, no way they, they wouldn't. But on the flip side of that, if you think about it, they could charge more than more for that than they could charge for the actual DLC. Yeah, that's fair. And people would buy it. Um, I don't want to give them ideas though, because I do actually want to. Yeah, do some it's chapter like. Event. Actually. it's a very slippery slope because i i used to play halo infinite which is like egregious monetization like you would pay like six dollars for the color red right and then if you want to look like master chief from halo 2 it's like 20 bucks right and like That's you insane. can't even customize it it is insane like it's genuinely terrible but people would buy it so but i think that would be my my dream cosmetic uh, aside from either getting my legacy back or finding a way to get my hands on the h2o delirious mask <laughs> the I'll have to look that up myself for like a visual. It's, here. Uh, it's the only trapper mask that only one person has, and unless you're a dev, but they don't count. No offense. Or a cheater. <laughs> or a cheater, yeah. So but only one person legitimately has that's not a dev. Yeah, and I assume it's H2O Delirious. Yeah, H2O Delirious. Yeah, you you can actually if if you're in the store, you can actually uncheck the uh, available, and you can actually see the mask, and it's it's nothing special, but because no one else has it, you want it. Exactly. Same with like the Ohm Wrecker Wraiths base. Yep. Yep. Or, 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 uh, is there any, is there anything else like that in DVD? I, I don't think, think there's so. something for Nia, maybe. Oh, the Dia Hype shirt. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That one. I forgot the name of it. Yeah. That one that Noob3 seems to have unlimited codes for. One of my uh, community members has that actually. Um, a friend of mine has it and he paid $1,500 for it Ooh. for a code for a code to some, some guy on Reddit for it. It's crazy paying that much. And then like actually getting the item, I'm not going to lie. And a year later he stopped playing DVD because of burnout. Yeah, that'll do it. As far as the trapper, I know you've talked about like a couple of things that you enjoy, but like if you had to pick one thing, what is the most enjoyed part of your killer? This can be like a tech a visual, a sound, like anything. What is the number one thing for Trapper that's like, I love that? Ironically, it's going to be the simplest answer. Getting traps. It's it's so satisfying when they work. It's it's kind of like, I would compare it to the like the dopamine that you that a Huntress main, because there's a lot of those, a Huntress main gets from hitting a cross map or an orbital or whatever you call it. Or a two-tap orbital cross map. Yeah, that too. Like, it's, it's, it's just like... I'll get a trap from across the map or I'll get it, but it's even better if I get a trap dirt. Like if I can zone him into it during the chase, I telling you, I smile like the Grinch. It's, it's not even, I'm not even memeing. That's like my addiction with trapper is getting, is getting the trap. It is a very, very satisfying audio. I'm not going to lie. Especially if they just drop the most powerful pallet in the world, teabag, then immediately ran into a trap. Oh, I love, I love that. It. Like yeah. they'll drop shack pallet and then I hit them over it from six and a half meters away. <laughs> oh my god it's so nice and then you get the pallet for free too love so it that really works all right in a similar vein but also completely not in a similar vein same question but what do you like dislike about him same tech visual anything what is your like wow this sucks i think it's going to be the same thing that anyone else who has played even a remote amount of trapper would say and it's that he is the only killer in the game for some reason that has to walk around the map and collect his power while also having a setup Unless you bring like a purple add on for it. But then your power is limited, which I don't, I feel like that purple trapper sack doesn't need that limitation where you can't pick up your traps. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, that's fair. I, but if I were going to take away that limitation, I'd probably make it an eerie and maybe make eerie stone purple. Eerie stone isn't that great. I don't care what anybody says. And which one is eerie stone, just in case people uh, the, don't know? Uh, automatic trap resets. Okay. But yeah, that's the big, the big pain point for me about trapper is that. He's a setup killer that also has to go and collect his power from across the map. Like you can always expect two to three gens to be done if you're if you're actually going for a setup play. Yeah, and corrupt is near base kit, and then like, oh yes, actually losing four generators was part of my plan. How did you know? Yep, absolutely. And then there's games where because of that you don't you have a map like Orman that's huge but also very wide open, so they're going to see everything you're doing. They never run into your trap, so you're basically man with machete anyway. Yeah. So. Now for a little bit more of a silly question, because obviously, how frequent do you run into fans? I'm going to say that in air quotes. I'm sure you know what I'm referring to of your killer. 
and or antis, you know, stuff like Morimi Trapper, etc. I run into a lot of Trapper equals DC, which is weird to me. Okay, okay. I couldn't imagine DCing against Trapper. I mean, I get it, though, like, kind of, because it's just like, I don't want to spend the game looking at the four, but DCing is opinion, of course. And uh, along with DCing against Trapper, like, I, I would say almost every game I play, um, as Trapper, obviously, there is someone g- that gives up on Hook, and it's usually right after they step into the first trap near the beginning of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's even a widely, like, just Trapper issue right now, because it's just... There's a whole like DC epidemic type thing going on, and then there's been like, oh yeah no of course discussions of course. little self promo I'm like that's one of my upcoming like videos that I'm going to be doing talking about that and it's like accessibility and then the DC epidemic and then et cetera et cetera yeah that's that's why like if if I see someone giving up on hook um and they get unhooked I'm going to ignore them they're either going to play the game or they're going to have to DC. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to kill them cuz that's not fair to their team either. Especially like when there's not 2v8 happening, survivor queues are actually pretty decently long, so that's not fair. Yeah, for sure. It always feels bad like it doesn't matter which side you're playing. And I see the viewpoint of like, well, just take the free win. It's like, I don't care about winning. I want to have fun, you know? Yeah, if I cared about winning, I wouldn't be maining trapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too real. Oh, okay. Whew. I jokingly call it no, someone in my chat called it the Schrodinger's trapper paradox. If you win, you can kind of point and laugh and be like, you guys lost a trapper. And if you lose, you can be like, it's fine. I'm trapper. <laughs> you win it no matter what. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> so you've told me a good bit here about like you enjoying your killer's play style. But I want to ask a little bit, like, do you enjoy them more like for the play style? Do you enjoy their lore or is it a little bit of A, a little bit of B? How do you feel about like what they've done with his like story? everything about trapper um like in terms of his play style and his lore his lore is very interesting he is one of a very small amount of killers that actually fought back against the entity and that's what the hooks in his shoulder are for yep yep and uh, and i love that and he he's like the base he's like the backstory of dead by daylight like with, without without evan mcmillan no one knows who the entity is and the rest of the killers don't exist in the in the entity's realm he was like the gateway for that which is really 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 cool but also the play style i really like the idea of I can set up, I hate calling it a web, but that's usually what you would call it. Uh, I can set up a web and I'm going to, yeah, it's like, it's like a, you're, you're building a chess board and I, I don't, I don't care what, what some people who also play chess and DVD say, I'm taking that word back for Trapper. I think that's um, a completely fair take back for Trapper. Trapper was the original chess player in DVD, <laughs> but, uh, you guys you just play your, checkers compared to me. That's right. Yep. They're all playing checkers. I'm playing chess, but, um, <laughs> No, you set up your your chessboard, and there's never a hundred percent success rate. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't. But when it works, it's beautiful. Okay, cool. So this is gonna sound loaded, I know. <laughs> How would you rate your killer personally in terms of strength and like why? Not just well, obviously their tier, but like your own reasoning based on your experience, based on like. All your hours, all your experience, uh, the time you put in, everything you've learned, spots, etc. Like, how do you feel about Trapper? I think so. There's, there's, there's a few different ways to answer this, and I think I need to answer it like all three or like all of those ways. Like, hey, that works for me. If you're a new player and you're choosing Trapper, he is bottom of the bottom of the bottom because you're man like with if, machete. Yeah, because you're man with machete. You're gonna put traps and pallets. Almost never the best idea, unless of course you're on Eerie Crows. You have no choice. <laughs> Yep, but um, like you're going to put traps in pallets and they're never going to work. And most new trappers are going to put traps right in the pallet. So guess what? All you got to do is drop the pallet. Trap is now useless. If you're a new killer player, yeah, bottom of the D tier. And then most new killer players that I've seen play trapper don't actually realize that they're, they're, you can go pick up those traps around the map. It's actually kind of crazy in in the hands of someone who's versed in trapper, like uh, not even just me, but like there's also like lefty who I would actually consider to be the best trapper. I don't know if you know who Lefty is. Uh, yeah, he was one of the people I reached out to. I also was talking to, I forget his name, but the number one guy for Trap Grabs, uh, the oh. Japanese player. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know his name either. But yeah, that <laughs> some of them are insane. But like Lefty, I think the reason Lefty probably doesn't do things like this is probably because he's probably got like twenty five thousand hours in this game as Trapper. <laughs> oh, no, I get it. A lot of people are so, busy, and that too. But um. No, in the hands of like a, a verse trapper player, his strength, I would say, is still not high. 
Um, but he's definitely not the lowest of the low with his strength. And it's even he he with add-ons, it's one of the weird things too. Trapper with add-ons is such a different killer. Oh yeah, double pinks is like my nightmare. I'm gonna say his best add-on combo is probably Honing Stone and Bloody Coil. Is Honing Stone the one where if you free yourself, you get downed? Yeah, I would say that's his best combo. Um, Eerie Stone has been, uh, I still have a habit of calling it Diamond Stone because that's what it was called back in the day, but Eerie Stone, the trap reset one, has been bugged for like three years. <laughs> bugged in um, what way? Um, half the time, it's, it's not even consistent. Half the time, the first trap you put down, no matter where you put it, even if you pick it up and put it down again, it will never reset. Oh. Yeah. And it's not even consistent. The devs do know about it. It's, it's impossible to reproduce on commands. I'm not a dev. I don't know how they would fix it, but that's been a bug for a long time. I didn't even know that. So that is, I might make that a new question going forward as far as bugs go. Yeah. And, and also over the years, they've unironically indirectly nerfed trapper as well uh, you remember the vault distance changes this past year um there was a time when you just put a trap in one spot on the other side of a vault and whether they slow medium or fast vault they're going to get caught in the trap now you have to decide okay what's more likely is it going to be a fast vault or is it going to be a slow or medium vault um and you have to place the trap accordingly because they can just avoid them now which i don't hate to be honest because i think it does add an element of Counterplay. skill expression to trapper so i'm i'm not i'm not upset about that but it is an indirect nerf i would say yeah for sure like like the m1 cooldowns for all killers globally would be like an indirect well or a direct buff depending on how you look at it yeah okay so another community question here how do you feel like the community the dead by daylight community at large uh feels about your killer and just why what's the deal both from um, killer and survivor perspectives I think those who play Trapper and enjoy playing Trapper, for the most part, there's some people enjoy playing Trapper and hate versing Trapper. But like, there's also some people who I'd say most of the community doesn't really like versing Trapper. And it's for reasons like you said, they don't want to stare at the ground the whole game. I don't mind it because I can pretty much, after all, like 13,000 hours of playing this game, I'm, I'm, it's very rare I get caught in a trap. And when I do, it's usually like an eerie stone trap in the middle of nowhere that I never would have thought. Because it spawned in the middle of a hill and then it reset itself. Exactly. So I don't mind playing against Trapper because for me, that's an easy game because I know what most Trappers are doing. And it's the same with Wraith. I've also played a lot of Wraith and I don't mind facing Wraith kind of thing. And a lot of people hate facing him, but I'd say the overall consensus is people don't really like versing Trapper because they have to stare at the ground or they feel like they have to. But people who play Trapper, for the most part, I would say they're okay with versing him. I and mean, that makes sense for sure. I, uh... I enjoy playing against Nemesis because it feels like, you know, I'm one step ahead type of deal. Like, I can actually dodge his whip. I can be like, okay, I know you're going to go for a drag here. I know you're going to try to hit this. Blah, whatever. There's like, yeah, there's actually not a lot of killers I dislike versing. Uh, I think Huntress is probably the only one I really don't like to verse. I'm not really a huge fan of a couple, but it's not really like a killer thing. It's like a play style thing. Yeah, and I think that's where I talked about Wraith too. I think a lot of people hate versing Wraith and I don't think it's the killer that gets most Wraiths are just hit and run, which is... There's a really, really annoying Wraith on an AOS. Like the Scourge of the Servers, four-man knockout, slug, everyone to death every game. Oh, well, I'll just hang... I'll stay hanging out on, on NA East and I'll, yeah. I'll let you enjoy that. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay. You can have him. So we did touch on this briefly earlier, but as far as the Go Next epidemic, like, and you said... You know, you saw someone like once a game, maybe like, what I'd are your thoughts out of, out of 10 games? I'll have eight to nine survivors who give up really quickly, it, it, which, which leads to me winning a lot as trapper, but you know, cause I don't like to stay and let the survivors farm. I just want to end the game, but I feel that sorry. What was the question? I actually cut you off and that's my bad. Oh no, you're fine. I was, it was a two parter. It was uh, how often do you have people disconnecting or going next on hook, which you said like eight to nine out of 10 games or so. And I was going to ask what your overall thoughts on the going next epidemic are really, you know, as a killer player, of course we did briefly touch on this, but this is more of a chance to like expand on it. Yeah. So the go, uh, am I allowed to be like completely candid about this? Uh, as candid as you want to be, go for it. Okay. So I think, I'd say 90% of the time, if it, I, I don't know if you experience this, but 90% of the, of the time when someone gives up, it's like right at the beginning of the game, first down, you like the most minor inconvenience happened. They're giving up. I think those people are a bunch of babies. <laughs> like, come on. It's, it's not that deep. Just, just play the game. That's all I want is just, I want to have a normal game. You can beat me. I'm trapper. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
And I, I do think on behaviors end, on a development standpoint, and they need to actually address it. I, I think the DC penalty is too easily circumvented. And I think looking at the give up epidemic and people want the DC penalty removed, I'm like, I get why, but also do you really think it's a good idea with the amount of people who just want to leave it the most minor inconvenience, you know? Yeah. Not to like spoil, I'm doing like a series. I'm not sure if you've seen the videos. But it's like I'm talking about like Dead by Daylight, what's like wrong with it as a whole and like how we could potentially fix like I'm just the idea guy, you know, like I'm just spitballing type thing, like make universal blood point offerings, etc. But what I'm going to suggest, air quotes, for the going next epidemic is just remove 4% outside of perks. The DC penalty would be a little harsher, I'm not going to lie, but like prior to all of that and okay, hold on. So DC penalty is harsher, but the DC penalty thing, you know how people can like, if something goes wrong, they can basically same frame DC, right? Because they have the, like, they can just escape lead match and then hit lead match confirm and do that in like under a second. Yeah. So the idea is that would have a cooldown. Like you would hit lead match and then there'd be like an, are you sure for like five to 10 seconds or something, just so you can like take a little breath before you actually hit it. And then it would make you like think a little bit and then the dc penalty would i have like a whole thing for it and then but prior to everything with like the going next epidemic i would have an entire patch that's just to add accessibility options for every single killer ever like everything you could think of i had like a 300 common twitter thread or something it's like what is something in dead by daylight that could use accessibility so we would have that and then you know like the, the carrot and then the stick oh, yeah i've seen that and i, I agree I like I've always I've had like a proposed solution to the give up epidemic. I don't know if you if I'm allowed to talk about it here. I, I mean, it's the section for the go next trapper, epidemic. But, so go for it. But uh, it's like to tackle this. To me, it comes in a few parts. Number one, obviously, if someone DCs. So Rocket League does a really neat. I don't know if you've ever played Rocket League. I have they not, have but a, I think I know where you're going with this. They have a very neat thing with their. So they have two different queues. Obviously, I don't think that's good for DVD. Two different queues. Like a ranked um, and unranked or. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're queuing up in ranked and you DC, you get, is it 10 or 15 minutes? I have no but idea. But everyone else who's in that game can DC freely now that the game is pretty much ruined. Yeah. I see have, how that could be abused in DBD, but that's why the penalty would have to go up. They have a very similar thing in Dota, where if a player is like not playing or they disconnect in the first few minutes, like everyone else can leave the lobby for free and then that guy gets punished. Yeah. To solve this, it wouldn't... Ideally, we wouldn't need to do this, but to solve it, it comes in a few steps like uh, the baseline DC penalty. I would make five minutes and that's just the baseline. No more free 60 seconds. Like it has to mean something. You have to be willing to take that L um, if you DC and, and it can go up to 10, 15 or 30 minutes. It should never exceed 30. There is no reason for more than a 30 minute DC penalty, in my opinion. And you can't lower these be, like these penalties because there needs to be some sort of deterrent and removing or lowering it diminishes that deterrent. And the community, like a lot of the community, not the whole community, but a lot of them, it's like if they're giving up or DCing that early in a match for the most minor inconvenience, I don't, maybe they're not mature enough to handle a game without the penalty. Is that fair to say? I don't know. I just think a lot of the time people could stand to use like a little bit of a break. So I think 30 minutes is a, uh, a good time, you know, cause that's like very, okay. I was tilted. I DC like I can go meander get a sandwich or something you know get some water anything that might be maybe a little nap i don't i don't realistically a nap's not gonna happen in 30 minutes but you know that type you'd of be deal. surprised like take well, yeah <laughs> but like a little take like a little self-care session before they go back to playing the game yeah another thing i would do like like you said remove the ability to give up or to like attempt to escape on on your first hook i would still have um, like the per like wicked deliverance like that stuff would still be oh there. yeah obviously unless it, unless it's a perk yeah obviously um, and we, we kind of saw a version of this in 2v8, right? Um, yeah, apply the cage cages. logic from 2v8. Yeah. Uh, even the hooks moving somewhere else, if the killer camps, I'd be okay with that. Unless it's basement. I think basement should have a, uh, I'm not saying this is a trapper man. I'm saying this is like, <laughs> yeah, game okay. Game. Cause I think basement should have like basement pressure should be basement pressure. Uh, no matter what killer you're playing. And I, I think that's, that's a really good way to pressure as killer. But I think. If you raise the DC penalty and, and stop allowing them to give up on first hook, it doesn't hold them hostage like some people think it does because they still have the option to DC. They just have to make sure they're they're thinking about their actions and whether it's really worth it, which I over time will teach people to stop throwing, uh, for, for lack of a better word, tantrums every time they get hit. You know, it's a video game and people need to just kind of remember that it's a video game. Yeah, like 
my main point is like if you're not having fun in 90 percent of your matches maybe you don't enjoy the game and like it's okay to quit i'm not saying you're going to but like say you have 13,000 hours and you go next every game like you don't have to keep playing the game like the sunk cost fallacy is not real i promise you you can just i played league for like five years i got the masters and i quit because i didn't like it anymore oh absolutely absolutely and i i 100 agree with that what do you think is the most frustrating part about playing against your killer? It's not something that affects me, but it is something that I understand. Like I said before, um, for sure, that's fine. It's something I understand from the point of view of a, someone who doesn't play Trapper and quite understand like the the, the logic, the logic behind it. Yeah, the, the macro. It's again just looking at the floor, and, and a lot of the times, and there, there's a lot of maps that don't require you to do that anymore because they're getting less and less grass. They replace grass with clutter for some reason, but. Borgo is a really good example of that. There's like no grass anywhere. It's just clutter. But on a map like, for example, um, McMillan, which is honestly not the worst trapper map in the world that like people seem to think it is. I would hope um, so. That's his house. He lives there. I, you'd, you'd be surprised how many maps that came out with killers that aren't actually good for that killer. I can't really <laughs> personally because I play Nemesis and RPD is fantastic. I, I like RPD as trapper too. Not going to lie. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But um no, like aside from some some maps, like you do really have to stare at the ground if you're not really like aware of what Trapper can accomplish with his traps. I think that would probably be the most frustrating part about versing him for most people. It's like it's different than most other killers because they don't have props on the ground you need to watch out for. Yeah. For me, the most frustrating part about versing a Trapper, and it's going to sound really silly, if I trap a survivor and they get out, they get out in like one attempt, I could get trapped. Trapper could be across uh, the biggest map in the game, and he'll make it to me with time to spare, and I'll never be able to get out of that trap. Because of RNG, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's just how it is. It's, it's like when I play Killer, there's always a god window on Mother's Dwelling. Not when I play Survivor, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is another multi-part question, and I'll uh, ask as they go on. How do you feel about win streaks on Trapper? It's really weird. So it's not realistic. You can do win streaks on Trapper. I think the highest I've had is like a 62 win streak on Trapper. That's but like I, I wasn't I wasn't playing around like I was in order to do that. Like I'm running four slowdown and and sometimes it's three st slowdown and brutal because pallets are just a pain. You know, I'm running like the best perks. I'm running his best combo, in my opinion, which is honing stone, bloody coils. So the traps mean something, whether they break them or step in them like and I don't think you're doing that as Trapper you know, without the best stuff for sure. But on the flip side of that, I don't think any, because of that, I don't think getting a win streak on Trapper proves anything. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it, it demonstrates anything other than, wow, I just had the sweatiest session of my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. Like I even mean, people who go for win streaks on nurse, like super Alf had that over a thousand win streak. He was running two to three slowdowns and aura reading, which I mean, I actually get to talk to him about yeah. that. in like two videos is very exciting. Oh yeah. I was there when I was there when he lost it too. And he handled it like a champ. Very nice. <laughs> yep. Alf's a good dude. I'm happy to hear it. I haven't really interacted with him before. I mean, I'm about to, but you know, it's okay. You'll have a great time with Alf. All right, cool. All right. To follow up on that, I'm, I'm only smiling a little bit. I promise. Do you feel, compared to other killers, that it's easy to win streak on Trapper? Easy? Th compared to other killers, is it easier to win streak on Trapper? <laughs> I'm going to be asking everyone this. I'm sorry. Um, it's just a really funny place to start. I would say, uh, here's the thing. I'd say he's, e if, if you include add-ons, he's easier to win streak on than Freddy. That's fair. And to an extent, Myers, unless you're running just, well, no, he, I would say Myers too. Freddy and Myers, he's easier to win streak on, but that's not a very high bar. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, it's it, any other killer, with the exception of maybe current Skull Merchant, could probably outwin streak. Oh man, I don't even know if she's like she needs help, man. Yeah, I, I always had this. Again, we're supposed to be talking about Trapper, but no, um, she's also a trap killer, right? Yeah. Kind of. That's like but, basically uh, Trapper. I always thought that what they needed to do with her was just in the meantime, instead of just killing her, they should have just removed the haste and the and the hindered. And I think she would have been, that would have made a world of difference. I, I think that would have made a world of difference, but you know, instead of killing her outright. Yeah. Not to get too far off. I'm just going to say this statement and move to the next part. Zozo recently made a really good video talking about Skull Merchant and like how the setup killer was set up for failure. That's the title. I'll put it like here on screen, but it was a really good deep dive into Skull Merchant and what's happened to her. Even if you don't like Skull Merchant, it's a really good video. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say on it is that. I don't like the precedent set by uh, behavior 
they admitted pretty much that they were gutting her just so they could rework her in a year. And I don't like that precedent. <laughs> That's exactly what Zozo said near the end. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, I agree with that. Okay. And back on the little win streak questions that I'm not going to laugh at again, I swear. Sorry. <laughs> Do you personally enjoy win streaking and why or why not? You did kind of say that it was like the sweatiest games, but like, did you have fun? Like, was it a good experience? Did you enjoy it? I felt accomplished. I was, so it started off like I didn't realize I was on a win streak until I was almost at like, almost at 50 games. Oh, dang. I didn't actually realize. And once I started to realize, that's when it started to get sweaty. And I think that's, I was having fun, but also that's where I start to not enjoy it because now there's that added anxiety. And yeah, I'm you- really bad for anxiety. <laughs> Which is why I made a killer where I spend most of my time away from the survivors. Survivors who? No, that's just a guy I pick up out of a trap sometimes. Yep. Yep. That's that's my next meal, apparently, because that's what traps are for, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with another multi-parter here. What are the common misconceptions about your killer? Like, what do you wish people understood more? Or this could be like, if there's a super common grievance that you see from the community, it's like there's obvious counterplay if you learn it type thing like what is the what are the common misconceptions i would say um common misconception is that one of the first ones i'll think i always think of is that basement trapper is unfair and i think the flip side to that is basement trap like basement's really all trappers got that's really strong you know and to go with that i think also it's really the common misconception people say there's no counterplay i'm like the counterplay is it's really easy not to go down at basement when you know it's a trapper i Um, can't I can get the point though if it's like a shack basement and then it's like you know he has the traps that injure you and then they're all at the like i know it's strong like that's his thing but it does feel kind of bad going down and that like if he has like iron grasp agi etc and he can get you there from like halfway across the map you know yeah that that is absolutely valid um me personally i don't remember like i said i play a lot of survivor i don't remember the last time i went against an actual basement trapper who had oh, iron sure. grasp like maybe agi because a lot of killers run agi just in general it's a it's really also his perk. perk yeah it is also his perk but there's also the fact that I also don't remember the last time I ran a full on basement trapper. I think it was like five years ago as a build request. Dang. <laughs> and I lost because basement trapper, right? You know, it's it's you're going to get one person and you're lucky to get another person if if unless they unless they hard throw and then you get a 4K. Which, Altruism kills. Yep, that's right. Altruism kills. And that that's that's the big counterplay, right? Is is that fun for the survivor on hook? No, not necessarily. But at the end of the day, it is a game of, of, of killing and surviving. So, I mean, not everyone particularly enjoys dying, losing, <laughs> dying. Yeah. You know what? Well, I say losing cause either side could lose. Right. <laughs> All right. So what like general advice would you give people that are learning trapper for the first time? This can be as in depth as you want it to be if for general advice. If you're, if you're learning trapper and you have a lot of anxiety, um, I would suggest DBD has this really cool thing called a custom match where you can load in with bots. Now the bots are never going to run into your traps <laughs> like ever. Uh, they will sometimes like if, if you find a way to lock them in a building where the only two exits are trapped, they will run into it. Like their, their AI will go haywire, but they will, if you trap one exit, they will not run into it. No matter what they'll, they'll take, they'll take a two hit down before they run into the trap, but make use of that ability to go in and study the maps if you have anxiety that way you don't have to learn and get crushed and kill your your want to actually play the character one thing you're going to want to remember is never unless you absolutely have to like i said eerie crows never trap pallets if you can at all help it it's It's, it's too obvious it's too obvious trap around the loop and zone them into it and i know that sounds oversimplified but it works so often and don't always rely on bringing his best maps like right now i'd say his best two maps overall and one of them is going to be obvious that's midwitch um, i was going to say midwitch i'm glad i got one for or one for two I, I i don't remember the last time i lost this trapper on midwitch it's actually for me that's kind of like brain dead trapper mode which it, it, it that sounds really mean but like you you're not accomplishing anything by winning his trap from midwitch <laughs> but another map that i'd say is one of his best maps is haddonfield even and it's always been really? haddonfield even back with i'd say even old haddonfield before it was like fully re, like redone visually was his best map that's actually interesting to hear yeah absolutely well you think about it all 
that was the last map that really had god vaults and everything that had no counterplay trapper could counter them and Haddonfield sure. never had that many pallets it was all about the buildings you could cut them off as trapper so, that makes sense like, yeah um Haddonfield and midwich i still think are his best maps and especially new Haddonfield. there is some I- I- illegal trap spots i would call them <laughs> is it because they're map. invisible or just because they're really good uh both <laughs> <laughs> oh boy and I'm so happy certain larger creators haven't found them yet, so they're not removed. Ugh. It's but actually no, it's... a really funny segue, too. Because I was going to then ask about what would you change if you could about the killer itself? Like anything from accessibility, kit, balance, vibe, anything? Or what is inherently problematic about your killer, if anything? Okay, so I, I will, I'll start with the problematic stuff first. I feel like I know where this is going to go for some reason. Oh, tell, tell me your insight. Where do you think it's going to go? <laughs> I mean, at least something about invisible traps, I would say. I, yeah, obviously. Invisible traps, they're fun, and when I find them, I will use them, obviously. Think what you like. I don't think anyone in this community would, would say, like, oh, this is an invisible trap. I'm not going to do this, especially if it's going to cut off a, a very powerful loop. Exactly. Uh, and, and even still, even if it's invisible, once it's there and someone steps in it, you, they know it's there now. So it's like kind of like overstated how powerful it is. But I do think it is a problem. But on the flip side to that, there are some loops where you'll put a trap down and, and, and the trap will be like floating above the ground by like half a meter, which is weird. I haven't run into that one personally. I think when they switched over to Unreal 5, any trap that you put near a pallet in Haddonfield, like, like within like 10 meters of the pallet would be just floating. It was the weirdest. Like, and I'm talking like floating. You could like uh, military crawl under the trap. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so Skull um, Merchant 2.0 is going well then. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I think uh, one of my viewers called it uh, Amish Skull Merchant because there's no electricity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's, that's what I would say is the main problem. There's not really a lot of problematic stuff about Trapper besides that. Like truly problematic. Like I'm not talking about what people find annoying. I don't like think- game breaking type stuff. Yeah. yeah game breaking is when you can just hide a trap and there's no way they could have known it was there. Unless they're just like walking around the map and just happen to see like the prompt for it. Yeah. But most of the time that's not going to be the case. Right. I- I'll give away one of those trap spots actually on Haddonfield where they broke down the wall on the side of the main building. Mm-hmm. You can just straight up hide a trap under the, under the doorway. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel dirty giving that away. But um, as far as things I would change, Trapper is in a weird position where he is, I would still say, the weakest killer in the game if we're going without add-ons. I would say a lot of people, including some people who, I I, got to be careful how I word this, some people who I know are in the know uh, have suggested to have him have all his traps at the beginning. And for a long time, I thought that would be a good thing. And I think in 2v8, that would be okay. In 2v8, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. But in 1v4, I thought at first, like I said, that might be okay. But now that it, like, I've given myself time to think about it, I'm like, if I had all my traps in the beginning, I don't think I'd ever lose. I, I, obviously, unless I'm facing a comp squad, which... See every movement you place? Yeah, find a way. But like against your average pub survivor... I don't think I, I think I would lose very, very seldomly. So what I would do, I do think he needs a better way to get his traps and a faster way to get his traps. And I've seen a lot of people suggest, well, what if he could get them out of a locker? And that's not a bad idea. But then there's some maps that like, how often do you see a locker upstairs in Gideon's, for example? <laughs> that's another point I make about like map strength, too. Yeah, it's, it's that's all dependent on maps. So my thought was I would up his base trap count that he could carry to three. I okay. think that would be an okay change. Okay. And then I would give him a trap recall. Um, How would that work lore wise? I mean, he's fueled by the entity, right? Just use, okay. a, little, uh, fuel, use a little entity magic. You know how kind of like, you know, a little how, entity um, crab just crawls it over to you. Yeah. You know how hag can teleport to her traps. She sees that little, uh, uh, like if she's using, um, what's that add on of hers that where she can teleport to any trap. I'm not a hag guy. Don't ask uh, me. I, but you know, the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, where it shows the little flame, like like when Freddy teleports to a generator, you can see the little flame icon over the generator. Yeah. Show that over a trap. It, maybe it has to be at least this um, this far away from you in order to get it. Like if it's too close to you, you can't go get it or you have to go get it yourself. But if it's if it's across the map, you can recall it to you. Okay. Um, and have it recalled into your inventory. Obviously, if as long as you're not maxed out on traps, that would be nice. And the reason I don't like the locker idea is because locker that works RNG. for Huntress and Trickster. Because they can throw their power and do damage while throwing their power. They have the distance. Trapper now has to still go set up the trap. Yeah. I, yeah, a trap recall feature would be nice. I also think it'd be nice to, and this is another thing I've given myself some time to think about too as well, is I always thought a version of Honing Stone would be nice to have base kit if they were already injured. 
Maybe. Um, maybe they should go into the dying state. Maybe it should always take away a health state. But I'm okay. thinking, again, in, in for your average trapper, that might be okay. But in my hands, I don't think that would be okay. <laughs> or in lefty's hands, that would not be okay. <laughs> So I think maybe what if what if they went into deep wounds when they escaped when they freed themselves from a trap and that also doubles as giving information too. if they're in deep wounds, you know, they were alone and a little bit of slowdown. And I would also on top of that probably make it so it's you should at least have like I'd say four or five attempts before you get out of the trap because like you get trapped and, and they get out in the first attempt Some, something to make it so it's not so RNG. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of the Trapper aren't I'm not really a fan of most RNG in Dead by Daylight, honestly, except like choosing a map randomly. Like I that's cool, like you know, a little variety. Yeah. Like right now in two V eight I I'm playing a lot of Trapper and if I didn't have my teammate there to capitalize on the traps, because we're, we're, we're never sticking together. I truly think sticking together is the worst thing you can do in two V eight with your killer teammate. For um, sure. But we're never sticking together. So if I didn't have my teammate there to go get them out of the trap, my traps would be almost useless <laughs> because they're getting out like first, second attempt every time. Or they're just um, with a friend because it's 2v8. Yeah, no, obviously, yeah. But like in 1v4, I think giving them deep wounds would, like I said, give a little bit of uh, information on top of that too. Um, and it also allowing it so they, like I said before, they could, uh, it would take X amount of attempts before you actually get out of a trap, make it a little less RNG reliant. That would also give inf- give information Um, Because if they get out very fast, you know, they're also with someone as well. Yeah. But Trapper doesn't need a lot. Like he's a very simple killer. He's in a weird place where if you give him the wrong thing, he could actually kind of be broken. Yeah. It's always a balancing act on whether or not it would like tip it too far. So I get why they're being cautious with changes to like anyone really. But I think those are at least like unique ideas. I genuinely haven't heard any of those except like the getting out of traps in like a set amount type of thing. Yeah. But everything it's, else it's is kind of like reverse nurse uh, nurse. If you nurse is also in a weird position where if you nerf her too much, or even if you nerf the wrong thing, even a little bit, she might just be terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but right now she's the most powerful killer in the game. Uh, well, I, I think that's up for interpretation these days. I don't people, think it's up for interpretation. Some people still think blight's more powerful. And I don't, I don't understand I, that. thought. Process, I disagree but, with that personally. <laughs> Yeah, that seems weird. She can go through walls and ignore pallets, like, but um, pretty good. But uh, like, Trapper is like reverse nurse. If you give him too much, he can actually become broken. Okay, okay. Now this is a question I was actually a big fan of. How do you think updates have treated you? And do you think that the buffs or nerfs that you got were fair, or do you think they were unjustified? Um, over the years, aside from maybe Myers, Trapper is probably one of the ones who's received the least updates. I would say. Um, Myers is like getting his first actual touch up, like real touch up in like seven years here right away in like two days. Um, yeah. Yeah. But Trapper Trapper's gotten some, like almost all the changes he's received aside from a couple of updates to survivor mechanics, like the vaulting thing that we talked about, almost all the updates he's received have been very positive. Like the little speed boost, the built-in coffee filter or coffee grounds. Now do you set a trap? I do um, like that. That is very nice. It's and if you pair it with like fastening tools that you can actually use trapper in a chase you know effectively i also think the biggest thing they ever did was the ability to reset traps that was huge and i think they only introduced that in 2020 like right around the time the twins came out wow really yeah it took them four years to do that so you had to pick Um, it up and put it back down you always had to pick it up and put it back down wow it was such a time saver uh and which which means if you were full on traps you couldn't reset your trap you just had to walk away (laughs) that's crazy um but that's one of the best things like pretty much everything they've done to him has been very positive and it's only been little things but it's little things that make a lot of difference like the trap setting speed and resetting traps and all that stuff and also making it so he's immune to stuns when you're placing a trap is he immune i thought it was more just like i don't even know what i thought i thought you just like placed it really well i didn't know it was like an actual immunity No, you can pretty much stand in a pallet. It doesn't always, it's one of those weird things. You know how, like when you're, I don't know how often you play Wraith. When you're cloaked as Wraith, sometimes you'll get stunned while you're cloaked and it'll be, it'll take forever. It's that uncloaking stun that just takes forever, right? Yeah. But then sometimes randomly you'll get stunned while you're cloaked and it'll just be a normal stun and you'll stay cloaked. It's with Trapper, it's kind of the same thing. You could sometimes stand in the middle of a pallet, go to set a trap, they'll down it, they'll get the stun points, you won't be stunned. Okay. That's interesting. And then sometimes, sometimes you'll end up stunned anyway. It's really weird. But if you're on the edge of the pallet, you can also fake them out for a CJ as well. Sure. They think you're going. They think you're going for a pickup kind of thing. Yeah, because um, it's a very similar animation. Because you're picking. Yeah, trap and, and to set. it's because of that little bit of. I think it's because his his stun box, his stun hitbox, 
shifts, which means you can get closer to the pallet and not get stunned when you're setting a trap. Okay, I didn't actually know that. That's good to know. Yeah, just a neat little tech. But that's what we call them, right? Techs. Yeah. <laughs> I did ask about techs earlier, so that would that would be a tech. Yep. There's Trapper does not have a lot of them, but yeah. But he's got this one. Yep. All right. My penultimate question here. How has the meta treated you as far as perks, uh, reworks? We did kind of cover that a little bit. But like as far as perks, uh, reworks your power, etc. How do you feel like the meta does for Trapper? Um, depends on what side you're talking about, killer or survivor. <laughs> uh, for you specifically. Okay, for me. Well, they've not really done any real reworks to Trapper. They've adjusted them a little bit, but the meta on Trapper for most Trappers is always going to be slow down. You kind of, you kind of need it. I'm, I'm kind of a giga chat. A lot of the time you'll see me running N Fury on Trapper because I'm just sick of pallets. Understandable. But, um, and trapping pallets has never been my thing, so I'd rather just get them out of the way. Like you'll see me running N Fury, Brutal, and Hubris, and and a lot of the time losing horribly, but. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone will, not everyone likes to run slowdowns but like yeah the, the meta on trapper it's very hard to like it's not treated him well because he is such a delayed killer does that make sense yeah like he takes so much time he has to collect and then set up and i feel like he'd be in a better spot if he didn't have to spend so much time collecting yeah he's a very slow start type of deal slow s- some people call it slow burn the only thing that's burning away is my soul <laughs> no <sighs> <laughs> Well, that's another great segue, unscripted, by the way. What would cause your soul to burn away completely? What would what would make you drop Trapper 100%? Like a change, a new character from something you've been waiting for for years? Like, what would make you drop him for good? Well, it's funny you ask that. My favorite, or my, my dream crossover for years was Castlevania. Oh. That was the one I always wanted. But then, I, and don't get me wrong, I like Dracula. But, like, he's got, like, three sets of three he's got like three powers and to me like he's fun to play but his powers are just weaker power crept versions of of other killers abilities like he's got his his um i forget what they call it he's still a fairly new killer to me but the the mini pyramid head a mini spirit a mini wesker yeah yeah but also like the one that's a mini pyramid head is also kind of like a a mini uh I mean, nemesis as well, to an extent. To an um, extent, for sure. And I think all the killers that actually have those as their power, like Pyramid Head's better at what he does than the version that Dracula has. Oh, for sure. And, you know, the same with Spirit and the, you know, it, it just goes on and on. But he's still fun to play. But like, he was he was probably the closest that I ever thought of maybe switching away because he was my dream crossover. And then once I tried him, I'm like, he's fun, but not worth giving up what I've put work into for kind of thing. Exactly. Um, now, what was the other part of that question? I got really into that one. <laughs> <laughs> what would make you drop them completely ah uh, yes so there's one suggest i've seen some actually fairly notable names in the community suggest it and i hate it so much that that this is something that's being said some people think that survivors should be able to see trappers trap auras when they're near them no uh, that's that's what i said no i'm like they're traps they're li- they're traps what do you they don't mean? call like, him I've, the I've minor inconveniencer exactly he's he, that's that's what i'm saying that would make me that would make me drop him if, if they gave survivors the information on where his traps were like aside from like finding them yourself or predicting them like the, that's all he's got <laughs> you know what i mean i do if know what took, you mean yeah and that would make me drop him and i would hate to have to do it but like then he'd be almost useless <laughs> Yeah, it's like back in the day when they had like custom skins ability and people would just make trapper traps like neon pink so you could just yeah. see them in shrubs. And uh, yeah, that 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 was horrible. Um, another thing that might make me drop them is there's been other suggestions out there of, well, when you step in a trap, you shouldn't actually get trapped. You should just go into deep wounds and the chase and continue. And I'm like, it's just the worst awful. legion. Yeah, th- yeah, that's just worse legion. Like, uh, and, and I don't mean to say like. I'm not saying this to all survivors. I mean, like just the people who suggest this, how easy do you need it? You're, he's already facing, facing trapper. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, it's, and again, that's not to insult anyone. It's just like, there, there's a point, there's a, there's a tipping point of you're asking a, for a bit much. Like the, even the buffs I ask for them aren't, aren't a lot. <laughs> yeah. You're not like asking for like two V eight movement speed after setting a trap don't get me wrong that would be nice but I, <laughs> well I of course it would be nice but like i understand why they wouldn't ever want to do that okay he's white now like, for four seconds yeah it's the same reason i wouldn't ask for 2v8's wraith uncloak that's broken even in 2v8 it's also bugged it's not meant to be that is it, fast. Is it bugged okay <laughs> yeah there's an extra zero it's supposed to be 22 percent, and it's 220 <laughs> percent. pretty good job so far <laughs> <laughs> well yes 
Well, that's kind of all I've got as far as questions go. So you want to have like your little outro section, anything you want to say for closing notes? Oh boy. Um, I, I would say I, I wish, well, first of all, I wish behavior would give Trapper a little more love. Obviously there's some killers that need it more right now, like Myers and he's finally getting that. And I'm so happy about that, but, and Freddie and Freddie. Yeah. And I agree with some people's sentiments that Freddie is whatever rework they give him is doomed to fail. <laughs> I think it's a very low bar. Uh, yeah, well, they're, that that's also true. But I, I think I wish they would give their because Trapper's their poster boy, right? Oh, yeah, for I sure. wish they would give him some more love. Like he he doesn't need to be super strong. I don't want him to be super strong. Like that's there's a reason I don't play like a ton of nurse and Billy and stuff because I don't particularly enjoy playing the most powerful killers. Everyone already does that, so he doesn't need to be super strong, but I do think there's a lot of quality of life stuff. And I wish behavior would do that. I also wish the community would uh, be a little more accepting a trapper. He, he's trapper <laughs> respect Evan McMillan. Just a little bit. Don't, don't give up on hooks against trapper. He, he, he's a good boy. He's just trying to play the video game. Yeah. Like I said, I wish the community would be a little more accepting of him. I, I know like people who play killer are usually a lot more accepting of them than people who don't play killer, but I've had people come to my chat and just scold me for playing trapper. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm like, I'm sorry. I played the worst killer in the game. That's my bad, honestly. My bad, um, gang. And as far as uh, uh, outro goes, I don't know if I'm allowed to plug myself. I mean, I would hope you would plug yourself after talking <laughs> with me for an hour. Go for it. Your links, anything new you're working on, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, you can find me uh, over on Twitch. My name is Pally Live over on Twitch. I play a lot of Trapper. Of course. I, I try my best not to dodge map offerings unless it's Eerie Crows because I don't actually hate myself that much. And I wouldn't blame you for dodging it either. But I play a lot of Trapper over there. I try and be educational. I try and show where the best trap spots are. I, I'm actually working on a full, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. I'm working on a full guide on trap spots because no one's really done that yet. Like a per map trap spot guide. I mean, that's um, exactly how I felt making my whip guides. So. I think yeah, that's smart. Like no one's gone in depth. They just like, they pick one map and they say, okay, you want, you never want to do this. You just want to do this. I'm like, okay, but every map is different, especially for Trapper. Yeah. Fill your um, niche. Absolutely. So I'm working on something like that. I want to actually get more people playing him. And I think if more people play him, you'll end up seeing a lot more stuff given to him, but that's where I'm at with Trapper. Um, but you can find me over on Twitch doing all that fun stuff, playing other killers as well. I do some killer requests over there. Uh, I make a lot of, I don't know if I'm a lot of phallic references. Um, Oh, I cuss so much. Don't even worry about it. No, I, I try and do that in place of cussing. <laughs> That's fair. You'll see me yelling like phallic references when I get when I get scared or something or jump scared. All right, cool. Well, thank you for coming on the first episode of this series that I will name before yeah, this video I've, goes out. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before, so I hope I did well. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, really nice. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity. And to everyone watching, thank you for being here. I appreciate your support, and have a lovely rest of your evening. Goodbye.